deliver. These promises weren't worth the paper on which they were written. And disabled people have been left for months without help. I've just been depressed, really, because nothing seems to be happening. Now, because I'm disabled, I receive disability living allowance, which is designed to help with extra costs like mobility and care. Now, we're not talking about huge amounts of money, but enough to help people like myself get out of the house and ultimately to work. But the government wants to take half a million people off this benefit and is scrapping DLA. So like every other working age disabled person, I'm going to have to apply to see if I can receive the new personal independence payment. To see how it's working in practice, we visited John Rathall, a writer who had a sudden stroke last July, paralysing his entire right side, leaving him unable to carry out even the most basic tasks. Partly it's, partly it's just... Uh, oh. Sorry. Um, okay, can, can you? He lost the whole entire use of his right side and he had global aphasia, which meant that he couldn't communicate. Um, and we thought he couldn't understand for quite a while. To be reduced to somebody who can't make a phone call or can't operate his computer, can't write, can't, feels like he can't call his friends because he can't you know, say anything. <clears throat> His family applied for disability benefits to help out, but four months later, and with their savings running out, they're still waiting for an appointment. We applied for um, PIP while John was in the rehab unit at Northwick Park Hospital with the help of a benefits advisor who helped us fill in all the forms, uh, told us he probably wouldn't even need an assessment. That was in October. Yeah. And here we are now in February and absolutely nothing has happened. Uh, right. We watched as Kate phoned the Department of Work and Pensions, the government department responsible for benefit payments, about John's claim. Oh, hello. I'm calling to check on the progress of my husband's uh, PIP claim. They haven't done any assessments for the last four or five months at all. Atos told them they would do all the assessments within eight weeks. But as far as they're aware, there haven't been any assessments carried out oh. in the last few months. After getting nowhere with the DWP, Kate decided to try Atos, one of the companies the government have contracted out the assessments to. Their contract's worth over £300 million. Oh, hello. I'm trying to find out um, where my husband's claim is. It's in the queue for assessment for PIP. You're not able to give out any timescales because you weren't given any guidelines when you were given the contract. You weren't told they had to be completed within eight weeks. This is really confusing. You can't see the waiting list because it's computer generated. So the DWP have misinformed us on the way that on you being able to see your own waiting list, and they've misinformed us on what the guidelines for assessment times are. So the fault is with DWP, is it? John did eventually receive a cancellation appointment, but only because Kate had continuously phoned up. Disability living allowance used to be run directly by the DWP and waiting times were significantly less than for PIP. Nationally, PIP assessments are months behind schedule and the system is in serious trouble. Looking at this Atos tender document for Southern England, it was all supposed to be so easy. They claimed there would be over 700 assessment centres ready to go from day one, resulting in no disabled person having to travel more than an hour. But eight months into delivery, travel times have been up to an hour and a half and only 96 assessment centres are actually in place. And huge backlogs means delays are running into months. Crossbench peer Lord Alton was so concerned he referred the Atos tender to the National Audit Office. I think you've got to look at what's happened with Atos Healthcare and draw a lot of conclusions. For instance, look at the tender documents that they originally submitted and look at the reality of how the contract is now being acted out. These promises weren't worth the paper on which they were written. And what do you make of all the, the, the chaos that's surrounding a, a lot of the assessments regarding PIP? It's been a debacle from beginning to end. The department, wherever they seem to go out to outside interests, seem to have lost control over those interests. And then the money is being spent, well, it's like a license to print money. We're talking hundreds and hundreds of millions of public pounds of public money. Atos told us... The contract was awarded on the basis of being able to meet the Department for Work and Pensions' stated needs. 
The department has made it clear that there are delays in the entire claim process, not just the assessment phase, the part for which we are responsible in certain regions. We appreciate that delays cause anxiety and frustration, which is why we are taking immediate action to address the situation. But the problems with PIP aren't just with Atos. In some parts of the country, Capita have contracts for assessments. And in those areas too, disabled people are finding themselves without support and waiting to be seen. We spoke to a nurse who works as a disability assessor for Capita. She agreed to talk anonymously about how bad she feels things are getting for her clients. Some of the claimants I have been to have had no benefit of any kind since early summer last year. If they had started with a physical condition last year, the stress of the intervening six months means that now most of them are being treated for depression. The disability assessors are supposed to visit claimants in their homes and write reports for the Department of Work and Pensions. So each report is 2,500 to 3,000 words long and it takes the assessors around three to five hours to actually complete the whole package. And if you are meant to be seeing four claimants a day, writing those claimants up and also travelling 130 miles, that is actually not possible. There is this constant pressure to deliver something that is actually not deliverable. Capita told us both our team and the department are working closely together to ensure that everything is done to deliver this new service in a timely sensitive and fair way. Every claimant in the regions we serve, Central England and Wales, should have the opportunity to set out how their disability affects them and receive a fair and quality report to allow the department to make its decision. We asked the Minister for Disabled People to respond to our investigation into PIP and delays in the assessment process. I do believe there are massive improvements we need to do to speed up the process. We need to get the quality right, but at the same time getting the throughput through. The companies have a contractual obligation to us. There are delays within my own department inside the DWP which I need to address. We don't just issue contracts willy-nilly. But it's very, very important that we, you know, I looked at this. Did we just chuck this out in one big lump? No, we didn't. I phased it so we could get the quality right and the throughput right. Does that mean we've got some delays at the moment while I get the quality right? Yes. Have I said to both of the providers I need to uh, improve? The, the, the amount of people they've got, people who are doing the work, everyone, the people are out there, these clinical clinicians out there doing this, yes they have to. Tomorrow the National Audit Office released their report criticising how the DWP, Atos and Capita are delivering PIP. Mm. For John Raffle, his struggle continues. On the 18th of February, he went missing and after a police search, was found the next morning in nearby woods with hypothermia and a broken arm. John is still waiting to see if he qualifies for PIP. Jordan Brand. Now, we invited Atos and Capita to join us tonight. They declined. A man